If this is your first time checking out one of my videos here on the channel from the booth with Mike, welcome. And uh, if you're not familiar, I've been covering the Ontario Hockey League for the last 16 years. I've covered the Niagara Ice Dogs, the Kitchener Rangers, the Sudbury Wolves, and now the Barry Colts. And for the season, I've been pretty much covering what's been going on around the Ontario Hockey League, primarily the Barry Colts. But for the offseason, I've been wanting to do videos looking at all the teams that have started the offseason process. And today we're going to cover the Sudbury Wolves. And I wasn't sure how to address this video because the Sudbury Wolves, this is a season that could have been, you know, for Sudbury, a team that's still looking for their first OHL championship. They haven't been to an OHL final since 2007. And coming into the 2023-24, this team was seen as the clear favorite to win the Eastern Conference based on the roster that was uh, on paper and just everyone who was coming back. It seemed like everything was falling into place for the Sudbury Wolves. And this is a fan base that is so passionate about their team. They just want to win. And we saw all year that the Sudbury Community Arena, it was packed night in, night out. And then it was just the things that could have been. It's just a bit of a discouraging season for many. So let's go back and look at the year that was because there's so many players that came back. You look at uh, the great picks uh, that were picked at the NHL draft, you know, David Goyette selected by the Seattle Kraken, Quentin Musty, a prospect now of the San Jose Sharks. You pick up uh, Jakob Vondras, who was drafted by the Carolina Hurricanes. So there was a lot of optimism about this team from the back end out, but Things just didn't go that way. There was just something about the consistency that was missing. Although they did make a statement doing a big trade at the start of the regular season with the Windsor Spitfires. They acquired Nick DeAngelis and Trevor Odell for Connor Walton and five draft picks. And then a few weeks later, during the month of October, Delibor Dvorsky, who was selected 10th overall by the St. Louis Blues, it was announced he was joining the Sudbury Wolves. So this potent offense just getting another offensive weapon. And it just seemed like everything was going in the right direction for the Sudbury Wolves early on. But consistency, like I said, became an issue as the season went on. Uh, the biggest problem during the regular season was keeping pucks out of the net. Because of the offense, it showed they could outscore their problems. It's not really a formula for success. You don't see teams who continue to do that deep into the playoffs. You look at the four teams that are left in the Ontario Hockey League playoffs right now, these are teams that can shut you down defensively and are getting outstanding goaltending. So for the Sudbury Wolves team, they look to address it during the regular season. They picked up Marcus Vandenberg from the Niagara Ice Dogs after he was named OHL Goaltender of the Week. Maybe it was a knee-jerk reaction to try and solve a problem, but then you started having some controversy in net because you had three OHL-capable goaltenders in rotation with Vondras, Vandenberg, and Nate Krawchuk. I kind of wondered as we were approaching the OHL trade deadline if that situation would be resolved, but instead they stuck it out with three goaltenders right through to the playoffs. So the Wolves, though, they did go big at the OHL trade deadline, acquiring Sudbury native Zachary Giroux, along with Noah Van Vliet and Donovan McCoy. But they did give up some big key pieces, young pieces, the other way, like Caden Taylor, who ended up going to Peterborough, and then Owen Protz to Brantford. But those are the sacrifices you make when you are committed to going on a deep playoff run. So you can't really hold that against the Sudbury Wolves because this is a team, like I said, they looked primed to go on a deep run in the OHL playoffs. Now you could say the whole bounty situation between Sudbury and Barry may have thrown the team off a little bit, but we saw them limp into the playoffs. They ended up fifth in the Eastern Conference standings. After they were holding on to top spot in that central division for so long, yes, they were being chased by North Bay, but really it was those last few weeks. And then they had that game in Oshawa to end the regular season, but that last chance to take top spot, uh, but ended up falling short. So a season of uh, what could have been really for the Sudbury Wolves, although going into the, the playoffs, they were able to upset the Mississauga Steelheads who were the first seed in that first round, but then just ran into a, a very tough North Bay battalion team and were swept in four games. So really, this was an exciting team when they were really, when they were healthy, when people were, when all the players were in the lineup, this team showed what they were capable of. And it was a lot of fun to watch. It's really too bad uh, they ended up falling out in the second round of the playoffs. But let's look at the top 10 scores from the regular season. It all starts with David Goyette. 40 goals, 77 assists, good for 117 points. Most points uh, in the Ontario Hockey League this season. So David Goyette, 
was fantastic for the Sudbury Wolves. Number two in scoring was Quinton Musty in 53 games. He registered 43 goals, 59 assists, 102 points. So Quinton Musty uh, doing a great job as well for Sudbury. Delibor Dvorsky, who joined the team late, ended up third in scoring with 45 goals, 43 assists, 88 points in 52 games of action. So Dvorsky, he was committed coming uh, over late in the season, and man, was he a treat to watch with the Sudbury Wolves team. Fourth in scoring, you had Kochadelic, 30 goals, 34 assists, 64 points. Landon McCallum, he had 21 goals, 38 assists, 59 points. Zachary Giroux, who they acquired from the Flint Firebirds, ended the season with 20 goals, 35 assists, 55 points. Nick DeAngelis, three goals, 52 assists, 55 points. DeAngelis, he was great on the back end, uh, setting up the, the breakout plays, getting a lot of assists. Also a good job moving the puck in the offensive end. Is That was one thing Sudbury did a great job. Once they were in the offensive end, they could keep that puck away and really move it around and eventually find those weapons of David Goyette and Quinton Musty. Uh, so Nick DeAngelis fitting in quite well there. After that, you had Nathan Villeneuve, 23 goals, 27 assists, good for 50 points. Expect to hear his name early at the NHL draft in June. And then you had Evan Kanyan, who was ninth in scoring with 23 goals, 25 assists, 45 points. And wrapping up the top 10 in scoring for Sudbury, Kieran Walton with 18 goals, 25 assists, 43 points. Now when we look at the goaltenders, they ended with three capable goaltenders. Uh, Jakob Vondras ended the season with a record of 20, 10, 2, and 1, a 3.79 goals against, and an 861 save percentage. So numbers that you would like to see maybe a little better from an NHL prospect. And then you had Marcus Vandenberg, a record of 15, 13, 4, and 2, a 3.88 goals against average, and an 878 save percentage. So that was, he had the best save percentage out of the three goaltenders at the end of the regular season. And then Nate Krawchuk had a record of 6-6, six and six, a 3.25 goals against, and an 876 save percentage. So his save percentage, pretty close to Vandenberg, but just below, but he did have the best goals against average out of the three goaltenders. So like I said, the goaltending controversy was a big question mark with the Sudbury Wolves team going into the playoffs and even throughout the regular season. Uh, fans were really wondering uh, what direction this team was going to go with goaltending because would they bring in another goaltender with a move a goaltender out. But we ended up seeing Vondras, Vandenberg and Krawchuk at the end of the regular season. Now looking at the graduating overagers, Landon McCallum, Zachary Giroux and Andre Anania, all graduating this team this year. And all three of those players, key contributors, although it seemed like it took Giroux a, a bit to get used to the play in the Sudbury uh, organization he seemed a little off at times and really didn't contribute too much offensively after coming over from the Flint Firebirds. I don't know if it was the pressure of playing in your hometown or what, but uh, Giroux still a good quality forward, and uh, he's moving on after uh, finishing his time in the junior ranks. So for the OA candidates for next year, it's a long list. So here we go. Uh, Kochadelic, Lucas Signoretti, Nick Yearwood, Devin Morrow, David Goyette. He is a Seattle Kraken prospect, so... Chances are he does not return next year, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Evan Kanyan, Noah Van Vliet, Donovan McCoy, so two players they acquired at the trade deadline. Ryan Price, Nolan Collins, Nick DeAngelis, Jakob Vondras, he's the Carolina Hurricanes prospect and an import. I think it's unlikely uh, Vondras comes back, but he could be an option. And then Marcus Vandenberg, another OA possibility for the Sudbury Wolves. So a lot of uh, potential players Moving on, just because of numbers, you can only play three overagers a night. You can hold on to a few extra, but still, these are players that they want to play if they're going to come back next year. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how the Sudbury Wolves will handle this situation because uh, there's a, a lot of uh, talent uh, that could have to move uh, before the regular season gets underway. So like I said, this team, a lot of decisions on the OA front, but... They also have to decide who's going to take over behind the bench as Ken McKenzie announced his resignation following the playoff exit against the North Bay Battalion. Uh, McKenzie, he, he's been a head coach in the past with the Sudbury Wolves. He's been a part of this organization for at least 30 years or more. Yeah, he's also spent time as an assistant GM and then came on as head coach. Uh, Drake Barahowski, he was added to the bench late in the season as an advisor to the defense. Does he become the next head coach? I think that he's going to be an interesting to watch because uh, he does have coaching experience in the past. So 
does he now move into that role as a head coach? I think it's a natural step, but we'll have to wait and see uh, what decision this uh, Sudbury Wolves team does. But I do think this Sudbury Wolves team will compete for a playoff spot next season. They're kind of comparable to the Kitchener Rangers because last season, nobody expected Kitchener to compete for top spot in the Midwest division. They thought they'd be fighting for a playoff spot and then surprised everyone based on the returning cast. So I'm looking at this Sudbury Wolves team as a team that could follow in the footsteps of the Kitchener Rangers, but it all depends on who they name as their overagers, who returns and uh, what decision they make with the coaching staff. And as an organization, what direction do they want to go? I do like their first round pick, Luca Blonda. He's got some great potential uh, for the future. He's a defenseman. He was the first defenseman picked in the OHL priority selection. So it's a good sign that this team is looking to improve defensively as uh, they move forward. But still, a season that could have been is just how it felt uh, at the end of the year. A, a very disappointing finish, but still seeing uh, David Goyette lead the, lead the Ontario Hockey League in scoring is pretty special. Uh, but uh, the next thing for this team, too, the excitement of a new arena. We could be talking about the Wolves playing in a new home by 2028. And of course, I've been following that story, and I'll keep you updated on that front. But that's how I see it from the booth when it comes to the Sudbury Wolves. Let me know in the comments section down below your thoughts on this team moving forward. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And we'll talk to you again soon.